I hope that everybody had a terrific week. The Lubavitcher Rebbe Zecher Tzadik Devracha was always careful with the words that he used. He very much did not like the word deadline because it had dead in it, which means an end, a stop. He much preferred to use due date because we usually use that word in reference to birth and to things that are new and to growth. This idea is certainly an important concept in our Avodah Hashem, and I am always in awe of Rav Meir Tversky Shlita when speaking to him to see how he measures his choice of every single word. At the end of the Parsha, the Torah in its introduction to the story of the Tower of Bavel has a very important linguistic lesson. The Torah tells us, Everybody was speaking the same Safa, the same language. Rashi says that language was Lashon HaKodesh. It's interesting that the Torah uses the word for language as Safa, and Rashi uses a more commonly recognized word for language as Lashon. We know that in Hebrew, there are no words that mean exactly the same thing. The same way that one could loosely translate nefesh, ruach, and neshama to all mean soul, or the various words throughout the Torah that refer to davening. But if there's a different Hebrew word, then it means that there's a different action or a different item that it's referring to. The nefesh, ruach, and neshama, while they could all loosely be translated as soul, actually refer to different parts, if we could say, of the soul. They're not referring to the same thing. And the Meshulach says that it's the same point when it comes to Safa versus Lashon. They both mean language, and they both refer to parts of the anatomy of the mouth. Safa are lips, and Lashon is the tongue. When referring to Lashon HaKodesh, so Rashi uses Lashon HaKodesh, the tongue. When it refers to the language that the people were speaking in the Tower of Bavel, it's Safa. What's the difference? Because the Sfasayim are external. The Lashon is internal. When we speak, there's something much more important than just communication happening. But there's a certain depth of connection that's created by that communication. As the Piazetz the Rebbe, whose Yerta was this week, says, the Pasuk tells us, Nafshi Yatsa Bidabro that my soul comes out with my speech. There's a way that we could com- that we could bond with people, depending on how we speak to them. The more deeply we mean our conversation, then the, the deeper, the stronger the connection is going to be. If we're just speaking about superficial things and we're not really reaching deep inside ourselves to transmit something critical to the other person, So then it might be that that reference of language is Safa. It's external. It's from the lips out. It's not internal. It's not coming from the depth of who I am. Nafshi Yatsa Bidabro. That it's not reaching the potential that communication has of my soul reaching out to somebody else and connecting and, and binding me with somebody else through that communication. We see the same point Unklis points out in Parshas Barashas. That when it says, When Hashem blew into man a neshama, so Uncle says, Ruach memalala, The neshama, what makes us unique, what makes us godly, is our ability to speak. We inside of us have a chilek of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, a peace, if we could say such a thing, of Hashem. And our peace of Hashem links to other pieces of Hashem if the conversation that we're having is thought out, is meaningful, and is deep. Perhaps this is very relevant when we are speaking not only to our friends, not only to our spouses, and not only to our children, but also to our Kaddish Baruch Hu. When we daven, what kind of davening do we have? Are we doing safa? Are we just mechanically having our lips move and say words that we've been trained to say? Or is it lashon? Is there a part of it that's thought out, that's coming from deep inside of who I am? Hashem should help us understand ourselves well enough so that when we use our gift of speech, we use it properly to connect and bind with other people and with the Creator of the world. Have a great Shabbos.